Hey, what's going on, Internet? Long time no see on the YouTube side. Um, I've been doing a lot of Twitch lately, and it's been pretty going good. I already got 60 followers on Twitch in total in just like in like two weeks, and that is freaking epic and phenomenal, and I'm so happy. So if you guys are subscribed to my channel and you're not sure of like you know where I'm at on Twitch, you can follow me on twitch.tv forward slash the will of gaming that'll lead you to my profile or you can click in the link in the description anyways here's a completely unedited video i wanted to talk about my memories with nintendo because today is nintendo's 127th birthday and that is a freaking fantastic feat so nintendo kudos to you nintendo has always been part of my life absolutely 100 percent wholeheartedly, positively, always a part of my life. I've loved Nintendo since, you know, before I could talk, to be honest. Uh, I was born in 1987, and unfortunately, <laughs> no, fortunately, um, you know, I didn't know about the systems until I was like three or four. So when the Nintendo came out, it was a very exciting time in my life. And um, so... My sister would play the Nintendo. Now, we didn't have much games at the time, so I would always watch my sister play, I would always watch my brother play. They would always be playing the Nintendo. And I was always be looking at it and stuff, and i get excited. Then eventually, I started to play the Nintendo. And it was kind of like a family heirloom, like it was passed down. And I wish I still had it, and I'm very disappointed that I don't. But it broke, and but I still wanted to keep it kind of thing. As like a keepsake, because it was, it was a beautiful console. Beautiful thing. Um, anyway, so many memories with it. I always played the Nintendo. Mario Brothers was always my choice. Super Mario Brothers was my choice with the Duck Hunt combo combination. Oh god, I was so revolutionary at the time. It was so great. I would always play, I would always play it, and it was fantastic. Then, I would just, that would be my game of choice. And then, I remember that we always used to borrow each other's friend, like, our friends would let us borrow some games, or we would rent games, and we would always put them in, you know, the system. Well, actually, it was just borrowing for the for the original Nintendo. So we always borrowed for the Nintendo, and then we would, like, exchange games or whatnot. So we didn't actually buy games. We just kind of borrowed it out from people, and I played it. So I would, like, play Mario Brothers 2. Then the beauty of Mario Brothers 3 came out, and I was so excited about it. And it was a freaking amazing thing. And I feel like it, it took Mario 3 to be like, love it. Love it, I love it, I love it, I love it. And I have to thank my mother, because <laughs> I would have been a Sega kid. It, but basically, what happened was is that I went to my cousin's house one day. And we... Okay, I went to my cousin's house one day, and he had a Sega. And he had Sonic. And Sonic was cool, and the graphics were different. And I didn't know of Super Nintendo's existence at the time. Nintendo... I didn't get a Super Nintendo until, like, I think 1994, 93. I think it was Christmas of 94. And I was asking for a Sega, because I didn't know about a Super Nintendo. So I asked for a Sega. So I asked my mom, Mom, I want a Sega. I, well, I asked Santa for a Sega. <laughs> but then my mom, she, you know, my mom, moms being moms and not understanding video games, she just got, she just rec recognized the original Nintendo that I had, and she just figured that I wanted the Super Nintendo. So she got the Super Nintendo. Best freaking decision ever. It came with Mario Paint, came with Super Mario World, came with the mouse and the mouse pad and stuff. And I remember I was so excited about it because I didn't know about, I didn't know of its existence. The internet didn't exist back then. Well, it did, but it was very limited. And I didn't know about this thing's existence. I would, I had a friend that had Nintendo Power, but I, I didn't look at the magazines. I just always like looking at the covers. But like, I just never really looked at it. And then I was so excited. It was the biggest surprise. And I played Mario World and I was enamored to that TV. I was glued to that TV. I remember even hooking this thing up to the TV. Also, that year, oh, it was the best Christmas. Not only did I get a Super Nintendo, but I got a Game Boy too and so did my brother. I'm like, my God. This is the best Christmas ever. I remember I got Home Alone 2 as my first game. My brother got Paperboy and Tetris. I got Home Alone 2 and something else. Because my mom, 
I loved Home Alone 2 at the time, so my mom got the game. <laughs> it was a very hard game. Very annoying and very hard. But anyways, it was the greatest time of my life, and I loved Nintendo, and it was fantastic, and it was wonderful, and it was a great thing. Um, so whenever my cousins came over, we had sleepovers with friends and stuff. I remember when the port in the back of the Super Nintendo kind of broke off. So I'd always had to like hold the Super Nintendo pressed against the wall with my foot and play. And I didn't mind. I didn't mind. I mean, I hated doing it. But then like there was like really cool tricks where we duct tape a pen to it to kind of hold it straight in place. It was great. Donkey Kong Country was definitely the game that defined Super Nintendo for me. Um, it was definitely my most favorite game that I played constantly over and over again. Diddy's Conquest was really the best game on it for me. And I didn't get a chance to play Super Metroid because Nintendo 64 came out. Now, I went, I used to go camping and when, the way that 64 came, that Nintendo 64 came in my life was I knew it as Ultra 64, but I didn't know it was Nintendo because it was Ultra 64. So I'm like, I don't know what that is. So I remember we used to go camping and it was like a resort camping thing. Not like luxury or nothing, but it's like literally the cheapest of whatever. And it was like really cool. My mom loved this. So we would go to this place and this place had like an arcade. It had like miniature golf, things like that. Um, it wasn't extravagant, but it was the best. It was bet. It was for me. That was the greatest thing. So we would always do this every weekend, like during the summer, and we would always maybe stay there for a week, maybe a weekend, and we just kind of just sit there and we chillax and we do that stuff, and uh, for a membership price where we pay yearly, and it was fantastic. Anyways, we went to this stuff and we would go into this arcade machine, and there was a sign that always spin and it said Ultra 64. So I always thought that that was the name of the company, but not the not the console itself. So I didn't know. So I saw a Nintendo Power magazine, which was from another friend who happened to have magazines. He had Game Informer, I think Game Informer, and uh, Nintendo Power. So I would look at Nintendo 64, and I saw the Nintendo 64, and it was like the greatest thing. It was so cool. It was like the shape of it was awesome. And it was like in Japan and whatnot. And it was supposed to be coming out very soon. And I was like, oh, I want this. So I so I kind of forgot about it. Me being a kid, I kind of just brushed it off. I forgot about it. I was busy with Super Nintendo and I was very happy with that. And once again, I was borrowing games, but this time we were renting games also from Blockbuster. And I'll play and stuff like that. I remember I had a copy of Mortal Kombat 3. And I was so scared of it because like characters like Sindel, Cabal, Montaro, they all scared me. And uh, but I loved the Mortal Kombat series, but those characters scared me, so I could never finish the game or I could never even play it. My parents got me some Mortal Kombat 3 for my birthday for Super Nintendo, and I couldn't play it no lie for a year, for a year. And I was trying everything I can to get rid of it to trade it for another game with my one of my friends. My friends are like, Nah, I can't have it. My parents won't let me have it, or that they don't want it and or that didn't really have anything that i wanted so i'm just like nah okay um so um anyways <laughs> eventually i started to play it and, and then i became a huge fan of it and so yeah that's what got me through then um i moved to philly when i moved to philly um it was around the i started seeing my dad again and me and my dad, we shared the same birthday. And I remember, I think it was the year 1997 or 98. I think it's 1997, 98. What happened was, is that before the whole birthday thing, um, a little before that, my cousin came to visit and he brought his Nintendo 64. No, he didn't bring his Nintendo 64. No, he was telling me about this game, The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. And I didn't know much about Zelda because it I didn't get into Zelda until Ocarina of Time. So what happened was is that he had this mag he had this book. I mean I played the I saw other people play Zelda, but like, you know, it didn't grab me at that time until Ocarina of Time. And then I went back and I played the other ones. But um he had this book, like he had the strategy guide. And I would look at it and for some reason he left it. Like he left it at the house and he went back. So I would be, I was looking at this, I'm like, oh my God, I want this, 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 I want this. And I was just looking at it and was like excited. Um, I remember I went to the store and I saw that they were demoing Super Mario 64. I played it like for Christmas. I'm like, oh, I want this. Oh God. I remember I had a neighbor and he was like, he was like upstairs. It's like a young guy. And um, 
I saw the 64 with Mario 64 in it. I didn't play it, but it was there. And I saw it and I'm like, oh my God, he's so lucky. He's so lucky he has what I want. I want that. And I was so excited. But um, when I moved to Philly, um, me and my dad, we started reconnecting after many years of not speaking. And for my birthday that year, he got me a Nintendo 64. And then also on that same birthday, or I think it was the birthday afterwards, it was weird. I got Ocarina of Time. And I was like, oh my god. So I would say definitely the games that really defined the N64 time for me was definitely Mario 64, Zelda 60, Zelda Ocarina of Time, Majora's Mask, Banjo-Kazooie. Like, I can't stick it to one game. Like, there were just so many games on the N64 that I just played, and I loved it. And I would say that definitely the N64 time was, like, the highest point of stuff. There was just so many games I played. Um, game Boy games was Pokemon Red, Pokemon Blue. I didn't get blue, I got red. But I always picked Squirtle. I don't know. For me, something cannot possess me to get the other two. Like, I can't. Like, Squirtle always. Well, always. No matter what. When it comes to red, blue, when it comes to those three starters, Squirtle always. I always gravitate to a Squirtle. So, that's what I do. But anyways. um, <laughs> Alright. What else? What else? What else? What else? You know, so there's plenty of other systems that Nintendo has created throughout the years. Um, there were some I didn't get, like I never got the Virtual Boy. My nephew had the Game Boy Advance, so I played the Game Boy Advance. He also got the uh, DS, I played that. Um, but then at that time, I was kind of shifting over to PlayStation a little bit. Like, my, it wasn't even my PlayStation, it was just my nephew. So I was just like experimenting with many different games. Eventually, I always went back to Nintendo. But then, you know, PlayStation kind of took me at the end because Final Fantasy VII was so, came out and I ended up playing that. And then PlayStation kind of took over for a while. And then um, PlayStation 2 was coming out. And I wanted PlayStation 2. Then I heard of GameCube and GameCube just looks so cool. It looks so cool and all this stuff. And I remember Smash Brothers was the last game I got on N64, which I thought was the best freaking idea in the history of the world. And... Oh my god. Though I didn't have friends to really play it with, I just played it all the time and I would always get really good. Pikachu was my character at the time in the first one, so I was very excited about it. Then we went to, um, then it wasn't until my mom, she be kind of, be, she wanted to be a foster parent, so she took in some kids. And then we had one of the kids who lived with us, he was 16, he was older than me by I think by like a year or two. So he was working. And he got a job and he bought himself a GameCube. And so he brought the GameCube and that was my first experience with the GameCube. He got Smash Brothers Melee and we just played it all the time. Like we were stuck on it. We played Resident Evil. We played a bunch of other stuff on there and it was the greatest, greatest, greatest time. And I remember that there was a time where we were lucky to get all three consoles. I eventually got the Xbox and we all had like, we had like this game room in the basement and we were both sharing the room. Like it was like three of us sharing like the basement room because it was the biggest room in the house. And you know, it was a tight space, but we were still able to like fit all this stuff. We had like two TVs and we were just playing. We were both playing on like our own TV and just all this other stuff. And it was so cool. So I was always playing PlayStation 2 and he was playing GameCube. And then every now and again, we would always switch and whatnot. So it was the greatest time ever. <laughs> then um, the Wii came out. And I wasn't interested in it. I didn't like the idea of the remote. I didn't like the. I didn't like it. I thought it was stupid. I thought it was dumb. The graphics didn't grab me. But that Zelda though did. So I was saying, you know what? I'm gonna get it for GameCube. But then they delayed the GameCube version, and you know there was Twilight Princess. The re it was coming close to release, and there was reviews everywhere. Had not pre-ordered a Wii U, ever. I mean a Wii. I have not pre-ordered a Wii. So I was just like, okay. Well, this really sucks. So, um, I didn't pre-order a Wii. So I didn't think I was gonna get one because now I didn't it, like people were waiting in line for it. People had like line. People were waiting like all day and all night for it. And then um, I got happened to get one that same day. So what happened was is that I asked my mom. I said, Mom, I'm gonna buy myself a Wii. And it says this is gonna be a Christmas gift for me and whatnot. And I think I was working at the time. 
I think I think I was or something. And my mom wanted to give me something for Christmas. And I said, "Well, I want to get this, and then I'm gonna open this now and 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 play it, and you know, and whatnot." And she's like, "Okay," and I'm like, "All right." So <laughs> I got so I went up, meet my friend Anthony, asked like picked me up, him and his girlfriend, and they they picked me up early in the morning, and we went to the store. We saw Circuit City, and there was like a huge line. So we went, we waited in the back, and they said, oh, no, you need, like, a number for this. I'm like, really? And then they're like, yeah. So we left, and I felt defeated, and I said, well, why don't we just try Sears? Sears wasn't open. There was no line there, so we just figured, oh, maybe we'll just go over there. So luckily, Anthony had a friend who he saw walking in, and he's like, I know that kid. And I'm like, oh, really? Oh, and he says, ask him. He says, yeah, we got, he's like, we got, like, about six, but you got to stand in the front, the other side. I'm like, oh shoot. So this is like a big Sears. So we went around, we drove to the front and there was one guy standing there. Well, no, two guys standing there. We were number three, four, and five. They weren't getting one though. They only had six and I was number three. Three's always been my lucky number by the way. So it was really cool. So I got the Wii and it was the coolest box ever. It was just a really nice plain white box and it was just really nice and it just looked so thing. I got Twilight Princess and I played it all day and whatnot. And then I was seeing this, I'm like, oh, this is so cool. Like, like this is cool when you played the tennis. Like tennis was my favorite in Wii Sports. And uh, so it was a really cool time. Though graphically it wasn't like mind blowing like the PlayStation 3 because I wanted that because I was also coming out. But it was just too expensive, and the Wii was just perfect. It was perfect, but, you know, graphically, it didn't look good. And I didn't even have an HDTV at the time, so really, it didn't matter. But it was fantastic what I did have, and I liked it. And I was using the Xbox 360 at the time, and that was my, that was my console. That was my primary console of choice. And then after that, the Wii, U kinda, the Wii just kind of, like, sat there. Didn't really do anything. Didn't do anything. And then my love for Nintendo just blew the hell up at the end because it was like Mario Galaxy. Mario Galaxy definitely was the standout game in that in that Wii library for me. There was Mario Galaxy, Zelda Twilight Princess, and Skyward Sword were probably the games that I, I just loved on the Wii. And then uh, 3DS came out. And then I got 3DS when it first came out for like $250. And it was like the biggest thing I felt like a waste there was no games for it and I was hoping that there was games coming out for it and I heard that I got it for Ocarina of Time I wanted it to come out but it didn't come out until whatever and I'm just like I'll just get it later so I traded in my 3DS eventually I got another one with Ocarina of Time I beat it and then I'm like I really wanted a Vita so I traded in that 3DS towards the Vita got the Vita then I traded in the Vita so I was going through like a trade-in phase and then that's when I was known as GameStop Will because I would always trade my stuff at GameStop to get other stuff and you know it's just a really really uh, funny time <laughs> after that um, the Wii U came out and originally I like I was so like caught off guard with this one like I, it, I'm like I was confused everybody was confused I thought it was like a controller for the Wii the graphics looked like you know fake you know on the video and stuff and though I saw a console there I just you know like you see a console you see the console right there but it wasn't the focal point the focal point was the controller and I was like what is this why what is this anyways I got Wii U day one because as the time got closer, though I didn't care for it, as the time got closer for it to approach, I'm just like, ah, oh, you know, let me look into it. If they have it, they have it. And then, so, went to Walmart, and there was a bunch of them there. Like, I'm like, really? Nobody's in line for this one? So, this was a little weird. I'm thinking, yeah, this isn't going to sell at all, because, like, nobody's really talking about it. Nobody really cares about it. But I decided to get it anyway. So I got it and I was really excited about it because like if for once every time when it comes to Nintendo I always feel that nostalgia feeling and I love that. So um, eventually I got New Super Mario Brothers Wii U. Um, you know there was Nintendo Land that came with it. And though I wasn't really enjoying those games, you know I kind of played it to the side. Got Mega Man Legends and that was fun. Um, but it just it like there was no game on the Nintendo like at least in the first few years that really grabbed me. It wasn't until Mario Kart came out, Mario Kart 8 came out, and I was just like, what the heck? This is beautiful, 
B-E-A beautiful and I was in love and I was hooked on that point then they came out with Splatoon they came out with Smash Brothers I was just enamored at that point but at that point it was too late Nintendo it was too late for Nintendo and Nintendo just had two bad years of games I did not care for you know third party support it was just bad news I was debating about trading it in a couple times but I'm like nah I don't want to I like it and then I was kind of getting over the trading in stuff because I ended up regretting trading in all the stuff that I, that I did um so I didn't trade in the Wii U and I'm glad because Smash Brothers came out and it was great um, I got a 3DS XL and I was really like I really wanted to get that one for Pokemon X and Y and you know so right now where are we with Nintendo Nintendo I feel where I'm at with Nintendo is that this NX is a thing um, and though I don't know not a damn thing about it in the point of this at the time of this video I don't know nothing about it except for the rumors of it being a hybrid console all these things like that what do I think about it I mean I'm freaking excited for this thing I don't even know what it is and I'm excited for it I already want it I don't know what it is they could tell me that it's a piece of poop but it plays Breath of the Wild I would still want it I'm a terrible person and I'm part of the problem but still regardless of that I am so happy you know I'm very happy for Nintendo it's just like you know Wii U having a Wii U towards the end they were doing it right but if this is how they started in the beginning I feel like Nintendo Wii U would have been a different story but um, if they had these types of games like if Splatoon was a launch title Smash Brothers was a launch title Mario Kart was a launch title could you imagine the difference the Wii U would have been like it would have been getting all these high ranking games like day one because like you know GameCube had some Smash Brothers Melee in the beginning but like it didn't really catch on which bothered me I, it just bothered me because I'm just like oh my god everything was so good so my Nintendo experience has always been good and there's obviously more memories that I have in there with Nintendo like there was birthday parties I went to there was other games that I played there was just things but one thing that I loved about Nintendo was the third party support that it always had in the earlier years in N64 it was exclusively Nintendo um, and Rare at that point that I would always play those games and then it kind of just went it just kind of went downhill from there there was other games I played like Wave Race that I really loved. Like I could go on forever and I don't want this video to be as long as it is because I'm not editing it. But I'm very excited. I'm very excited for everything. So, happy birthday Nintendo. 127 years and here's to another 127 more. And I hope that if I ever have kids or whatnot, I will always share my i would always share the legacy of nintendo to my kids and make sure that that passes on as nintendo evolves as a company i am so excited to hear about this nx i'm so excited to hear about anything that nintendo comes out with i am always looking forward to anything that they do because <laughs> they are unique innovators they're different and that's what I like. Like, PlayStation is a guarantee. I know what I'm getting with PlayStation. Like, PlayStation 5, I know where it's going. I know what I want. It's going to give me the simplicity that I want. It's going to give me, you know, the typical realistic games. It's going to give me the third-party support. It's going to give me the basic controller with no unique ideas. Nintendo is going to give me the freaking crazy stuff that I wasn't asking for, that I wasn't looking for. Nintendo is going to give me that new exciting feeling, that nostalgic feeling that when you have one, you feel special for a little bit and then you'll be cool. Anyways, I hope Nintendo does not mess this one up. Um, but regardless, I'm getting it. I'm getting it. The moment that that thing pops up online that is getting pre-ordered is going to be in the cart and I'm going to be glued to that screen. And I don't care. I'm, I want this Nintendo NX. Anyways, hopefully Nintendo reveals it soon. Like, tomorrow? Like today, because today's your birthday. Why not? Why not? Why not? Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching this video. What are your Nintendo memories? Let me know in the comments below. 
And also, if you guys want to see more of me, I am streaming more often now. I stream eight hours a day for a week, uh, every, for the week during the weekdays, and then every now and again I'll do a weekend. And then I do gaming uh, with followers and friends on Fridays. I don't have any specific names for it because I'm still in the beginning of it. But if you guys want to check that out, links are in the description below. So, thank you guys so much for watching. This has been Will from the Will of Gaming. I hope you guys had a fantastic day. Happy birthday, Nintendo. And see you guys next time. Bye!